So the most popular video that I've ever shot on this channel was the video where I looked at watches of prominent world leaders and figures. And very briefly in that video, I did look at watches of British royalty. And I got a lot of suggestions in the comments to do an entire video on the subject. So better late than never, but let's look at watches of British royalty. Now, if you've seen any of my videos in the past of videos of this nature, what I usually do, look at one watch per individual uh, that I think stands out in terms of their entire collection or stands out in terms of having some significance to the brand that it represents. But to start out and looking at the entire British royalty, Queen Elizabeth II, she doesn't mess around when it comes to her watches. In her time as queen, she has made public appearances wearing a series of different Patek Philippe's, most of them being exotic custom ellipses a line of watches first introduced in 1958, and outside of the Calatrava, they could be the most elegant model from the brand, with her Patek 4975 adorning diamonds alongside the outside of the bezel and a pearl bracelet. Yeah, this one screams royalty. However, probably the most significant watch in terms of its historical relevance is her JLC Caliber 101. Now this watch finds historical importance in the fact that first it was worn during her coronation in 1953, as well as being a special watch for GG Le Coult. The Calibre 101, developed in 1929, was a precursor for what was to come with the construction of many ultra-thin calibers over the years following, and the creation of the Reverso in 1931. The Calibre 101 was, and still is, the smallest mechanical watch movement ever produced, making up 98 parts but weighing an astounding one gram. During her coronation, the watch was on full display, housing the legendary caliber, featured on an extravagantly diamond set bracelet. And apparently the watch was lost. However, in 2012, the CEO of JLC, Jerome Lambert, gifted the queen a replacement that strongly resembles the original, housing that same 101 caliber within. So one of the biggest commonalities that I find with watch collectors is the connection to watches and just the emotional attachment to them, especially when you have sentimental value if a watch has been passed on. And it's cool to see that this shared experience that many of us have is also shared with a member of British royalty. In the 1990s, Pierce Brosnan was casted to be Agent 007. And on his wrist throughout many of his movies as Bond, the Seamaster 300 was a watch appearing on his wrist. With the high viewership of these movies, well, it led to the greatest commercial success of Omega in recent memory, making ripple effects throughout culture, effects even felt by those at the top. With the Omega Seamaster 300 quartz, the 256180, making its way on Prince William's wrist. The watch is certainly not a bad watch, However, when thinking of a watch for a king, I think there are many other likely suspects that would usually get the go ahead. That said, what makes this watch my choice instead of the other Cartiers and other watches that he's been seen wearing is just where this watch comes from. The watch was a gift to Prince William from his late mother, Princess Diana, as it was clearly gifted him as a young boy and can be seen on the wrist during many public appearances from a trip to Brooklyn, watching the Cavs play the Nets. I remember watching this game as a Cavs fan uh, when LeBron knocked down a crazy fadeaway jump shot and him clapping with the watch on his wrist. And even during his wedding day in 2011, and in a world of watches where it's easy to get caught up in the material of these things and never feeling satisfied, I think this is another good reminder that our watches, they acquire meaning through the experiences that we have with them and just actually wearing them. Now, before we proceed any further, I wanna give a big thank you and shout out to our sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare has been a great tool for me and it's an online learning community for creators with more than 30,000 classes in design, photography, business, and more. So I've really been trying to up my game in the arena of watch uh, product photography and videography, which hopefully you guys have seen some improvements with in the last few months, hopefully. And I honestly have to say, some of my progress in this has to come from Skillshare, as they have a whole suite of photography classes that I've actually been taking, especially a recent course that I just took, product photography, style and edit for stronger images. It really helped me tremendously with just improving lighting and my shooting setup and getting the most out of my macro shots. And if you guys wanna give Skillshare a shot, they're actually giving away free two month unlimited access trial to any of my subscribers here if you click the link in the description. And after that, it's only $10 a month to keep it going. And by doing so, you'll join me and then seven other million creators learning with Skillshare. So use that link down below and thanks again to them for sponsoring this video. Now from Prince William, we look at the person who gifted him his Omega Seamaster. Princess Diana, married to Charles, Prince of Wales and mother of William and Harry, certainly played a role in British royalty, yet had an image that spanned beyond that, as she undoubtedly became a fashion icon. In the earlier years, she was seen wearing primarily a gold Patek Philippe, and during her engagement to Prince Charles, wore two watches, one of them being Charles's, both on the same wrist. Yet if there's one watch that has become synonymous with her timeless approach to women's style, the watch worthy of mentioning here is her Cartier Tank. The Cartier Tank was a watch that rose to prominence quickly 
and got its start with its release in 1917. A watch that embodies elegance despite being inspired by World War I tanks. However, much of what makes this watch iconic was the many notable figures who wore them, people such as Andy Warhol, Jackie Kennedy, and of course, Princess Diana. Diana appeared to be a huge proponent of the design, as she appeared to own both a Cartier tank Louis Cartier and a tank Francaise. Watches that seemed to be on her wrist during the majority of her public appearances, and it appears that her taste may have rubbed off on other women within the royal family, specifically Kate Middleton, the Duchess of Cambridge, and Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex. Like Diana, the two have predominantly been seen sporting Cartier watches as well. Meghan Markle has been spotted wearing a Cartier tank Francaise, a model first introduced in 1995, hers appearing to be a quartz variation coming on a two-tone bracelet. And Kate Middleton's wears a relatively newer addition to the Cartier catalog with a Ballon Blue, a watch that was introduced in 2007, aimed to really tackle that unisex audience as the majority of Cartier watches commonly do. However, with time, it has become a core best-selling luxury dress watch for women across the board when you look at the entire industry. Ballon Blue, translating to Blue Balloon, alludes to the uniquely designed blue sapphire crown fitting within the crown guards of the case, making it one of the most eye-catching and easy to spot designs nowadays. Now like Princess Diana with her Cartier tank, our next watch suits the next royal family member extraordinarily well, with Prince Michael of Kent and his Royal Oak 5402. Many of us watch fans know the story of the Royal Oak, developed by Gerald Genta, made waves when released at Baselworld in 1972, with many resisting the price tag of an all steel high-end sports luxury watch. Yet with time, this legend of the watch industry was born. But what makes this mention of AP's flagship watch even more appropriate, as the name Royal Oak comes from a famous tree in England where King Charles II hid from Cromwell's army in 1651, making it only that more fitting that Prince Michael of Kent wears one. His particular model coming in two-tone, a watch that if you imagine being given just the visual descriptions of Royal Oak in two-tone, would probably imagine it could be an ostentatious piece. However, with Prince Michael's coming with a gray dial and a more understated size when paired on his wrist, is not overdone in the slightest. However, it probably helps considering he is one bespoke gentleman. Now, I'm far away from being British royalty, probably don't need to tell you that, but there is one thing I have in common with one member of British royalty, and that is an appreciation for the Rolex Explorer too. Prince Harry, son of Charles, Prince of Wales, and Diana, Princess of Wales, and being the sixth line to the throne, has shown an appreciation for brands like Breitling, particularly in aerospace that he has been seen wearing over the years. However, the watch that has frequented his wrist the most, from what it appears, is the Rolex Explorer 2 216 570. The Explorer 2 line was first introduced back in 1971, with the legendary 1655, a watch often referred to as the Steve McQueen, but shouldn't really be called that because he never actually wore one, but that's a different story. But since the 1655 was introduced, the model has progressed over the years, with several other references coming into the forefront, and overall has been a less appreciated classic in the steel sports range from Rolex, with it getting its latest update in 2011 with the 216570. The watch that differs quite a bit from the reference prior, the 16570, I've done an entire review on that reference if you've not seen that video, link down below, but the 216570 features a super case combining it with a 42 millimeter diameter as well as an upgraded caliber within the 3187, a GMT caliber from Rolex that still resides within the Explorer 2 to this day as of releasing this video. And just to speak to the versatility of this piece, you get an idea by seeing the different scenarios Prince Harry was seen wearing his, with it on the wrist and his time serving in the British Army, as well as in more casual scenarios, as he was wearing it on the wrist throughout the 2012 London Olympics while watching. And all in all, one of the most versatile pieces Rolex makes with its white dial while maintaining an under the radar look. Probably an added plus considering when you're British royalty, drawing attention to yourself is never going to be an issue. Now for our last watch, we look at Charles, Prince of Wales. When looking at Charles, he certainly maintains an impeccable level of mastery in the arena of menswear. But despite never seeing him wearing the same suit or sports coat, you can find him wearing nearly the same watch every day. A more obscure pick, a Parmigiani Florier Toric Chronograph. So Parmigiani Florier is a relatively new Swiss watch brand, at least in terms of industry standards, founded back in 1996. The watch itself is interesting though, certainly resembling many classic 20th century designs with its broad substantial lugs, slim Roman numeral markings, raised double coin edge bezel, with an appropriately matched guilloche finish on the dial that matches the look overall of the watch. And to top it all off, an El Primero base caliber within powering the chronograph and his three subdials, perhaps the king of chronograph movements. So in other words, 
one certainly worthy for that of a prince. So guys, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit that bell icon. Any other topics of notable figures that you'd like me to do a deep dive of, leave comments down below. If you wanna get an iconic watch for yourself, maybe one of the watches mentioned here, go and hit the link in the description to Bob's Watches, one of the largest online retailers for watches and a partner of our show. Any purchase supports us and what we're doing here. Also, if you wanna join our watch giveaways, fill out that watch giveaway form and then follow me on Instagram. Best way to kind of communicate with me on a day-to-day -day basis, a little bit more personal there. So definitely go follow me and I've been posting a lot of awesome photos as well. So guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well and I'll see you all very soon.